I greet you in Jesus' name and let's walk through the scriptures because remember, walking through the scriptures means walking with Jesus because Jesus is the scriptures and everything centers around him. So like Adam who walked with Jesus uh, in the evening in the garden, uh, likewise we get Enoch who walked with the God and was not. So it's important that we walk with Jesus on a daily basis. So let's take this opportunity to continue further. We're talking about the story of Agai and how she um, interacted with Adam, with Abraham and um, Isaac uh, and uh, Sarah. So let's continue in the series and let's see what God has to tell us. So we stopped at uh, Genesis 21 verse 1 and we know that the Lord visited Sarah and it continues to say, as he had said. I want you to realize that you serve a God that keeps to his word. The Bible says in Matthew 24 verse 35, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word will not pass away. Our focus is on the root meaning of the word said. That root meaning means to say in one's heart. I want to let you know that God has made a decision surrounding you. And whatever he has decided, he stems from love. You need to know that whatever God has, the Bible says he has plans to prosper you. That plans to prosper you is stemming from love. The second meaning we have in the word said means to boast. And just like a father and a mother boast of their child, I want you to know that when you wake up, the Lord is excited, surrounded, um, uh, jumping around you uh, spiritually and rejoicing that you're awake because he knows he can fellowship with you. Because the idea around God creating the universe and the world is because he was love. He is love, sorry. And uh, love wants to um, express itself. And God's idea was to express his love to humanity. And therefore he has created uh, the heavens and the earth because love always wants to give off and when when you wake up in the morning know that you are greeted in love because the bible says his mercies are new every morning those mercies are rooted in love so the, the root meaning we say it is said it means to boast but my question to you is do we boast as he does when visiting him on a sunday morning do we have that joy do we display that joy i've seen people standing uh, effortlessly and just while the musicians are going on while the people are playing People are just effortlessly just staring at the stage and not really giving their effort that they would give at a match, at a rugby match, at a, um, a game that they are playing. All that effort and, 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 and um, joy that they display. But when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the service, it is just becoming a practice where we are marking the register and becoming spectators instead of participators in worship. The scripture further goes on to say, And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Watch this. Previously it is said, but now watch this. He moved from said to and the Lord did. Now the Bible says that we must be hearers and doers of the word. You know the people say, practice what you preach. And this principle is displayed by God himself. That he doesn't just speak certain things. He doesn't just say things out of emotional state. But he does what he wants to say. And he's fulfilled it. By doing the action, by saying, you know what, this is what I've said to Sarah and now I'm doing it. So, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. There is a principle of reinforcement that although he said to Sarah, you know what, I will do this. Now he's gone over to actually do it. Now, I want you to understand that we must be people that are accountable to our word. If we, there's many times we make empty promises to God. We say, Father, no, if you do this, if you take me through this uh, uh, mountain, I will do this, I will do that. But when we uh, cross the mountain, when the Lord has taken us through, we don't fulfill our word. We don't keep up to our word. We must be people of integrity. That our word must be yea and yea. Because if you, if you waver in this, then you are a double-minded uh, double man. And a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. It's time for the church to rewire their thinking and come back to the stability, the foundation that is not shaken in all our decisions, all our lifestyle, in all our ways. Because the Lord demonstrated yet again in this incident and in many other incidents in the Bible that whatever he says, he will do. The redemption plan was spoken about years ago by God and you watched Jesus demonstrated it. He did what he would say he'd do. And he stretched out his arms and died for you and me. Why can't we maintain the same standard when we interact with the one that loves us first? And because of this principle that God has shown that he sticks to what he says, we can trust in his word to say, you know what? God says, and I go and prepare a place for you. He's made a promise and we know he will be accountable to that without waver because he's showed it. He showed it in years of old. He showed it while he was down here with mankind. And we know he will show it 
for our tomorrow where we already will sit with him in the highest places to serve him and worship him. Verse 2 helps us to see that it says, For Sarah conceived and bare. Now I want you to realize that they speak about two processes here. Here one is the conception and the other one is to bear. Now I want you to compare the both. Your conception will take you from, from the starting point to the path where you're going to be giving birth. Now in that process, you will go to different um, emotional states, uh, spiritual states. Why? Because just like a pregnant woman, that they go through their vomiting, their morning sickness, their different phases, uh, trimesters, and there's changes that take place in their body. Likewise, from your conception to your birth, what you're carrying spiritually, you will experience these changes. But like a mother, a mother will do everything to protect the child and, and not count the uh, emotional state, the um, changes they feel uh, in their body, the sickness they may feel in their body, will not count that because they know at the end, giving birth to that child outweighs all the changes that they went through. And likewise, you need to keep that in your, mi in your mind. Spiritually, God has allowed you to conceive something and it's time that you will bear from the conception to the bearing point that when God visits you, he impregnates you spiritually to become a blessing to you and the nations around you. Realize that just as a child is born to a family, that child will have its own destiny. That child will be used by God for the purposes that which God brought that child forth. And likewise, that child will be a blessing to their family, their blessing to their parents, the one who conceived it and bare him, and as well the blessing to the generations to come and the world around it. So likewise, look at your um, uh, destiny that God has through you, what you want to, the purpose that he wants to fulfill you, and keep focus on that because that's the one thing that the enemy is focused on, but you are not. Because the enemy is focused on that because he understands the principle of stealing, killing and destroying you. He wants to steal your time. And I want to tell you about time. If the world is taking up all your time and taking, um, uh, taking deviating you away from God, and you need to ask, stop and ask yourself, is that becoming an idol to me? Because whatever you do must not outweigh the time you spend with God, the, the, the effort you spend in God. We find um, that the devil also wants to kill. He wants to kill your passion. And um, he wants to tell you, you know what, that is why you find uh, the passion is taken out. Passion is taken out when a person decides to abort their child. There's no passion. They, they, they decide to make an emotional decision based on the circumstances, based on that now moment. That's what they do. But they don't realize there is a now moment that is in God, which is known as the I am. The I am will say at that moment, you know what, I am right here. Continue with this. But what happens, the person decides on their own. An emotional state, a, a, a human ideology, human reasoning uh, steps in there and there's no passion. There's no godly passion. That start, and therefore, suddenly what happens? We want to abort the child. And what happens in the process? Yo, that which you needed to bear is suddenly stopped. And the blessings that flow from it is suddenly stopped. Because you have no idea. There are many cases where people have, after a while, given birth to, to the child and at that point, they said, you know what, I want to abort my child. And something happened in such a, such a way where they said, you know what, they changed their mind. And they gave birth to the child. And that ch child turned out to be a great person for the things of God. A great person to impact the world. There are many instances where this happened. So give God a chance because don't be willing to abort that which God wants to do in your life through emotions. Remember, an emotional decision must be based and rooted under the spiritual distance uh, decision. So spiritual decisions take preeminence over emotional decisions. 